Hi Bureaus, welcome to the Craft Beer Channel. Today I'm here with Hot Topic and Sunday Brunches, Sarah Warman. Hi there! Hi! <laughs> Um, today we're talking about beer cliches. So what we've done is we went onto Twitter and onto Facebook and we asked lots of people what cliches get your back up. Uh, and we printed them all off and we've got them in random on sheets of paper down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick them up um, as they come and then battle it out to persuade the audience, persuade YouTube that uh, there's no cliches about beer. All the rules have been broken. So number one, lager is boring. I repeat, lager is boring. I mean, lager, lager can be boring. Yes. But there is a wealth of lager behind the lager that people are most familiar with. Yeah. And that's exciting and a hugely broad spectrum of different styles of lager. Yeah, well, that, that's the thing. Like the difference between lager and ale is literally yeast. Yeah. So we shouldn't be dismissing half of the world's beers just because it doesn't use a yeast and also most of the time particularly American breweries use very clean yeast yes, so yeah. it's almost like a lager anyway you're not getting any yeasty esters or flavours from yeah. that because you don't have that estery quality from the yeast that you get with ales it's a different kind of fruitiness and it's a much cleaner fruitiness yeah the, the yeast gets in the way of yeah. what they're trying to do with the malt yeah. whereas lager gives you that very blank canvas to do whatever you want with a beer yeah Murky beer is off beer. At the end of the day, the murk is probably flavour. That's in a nutshell. That's what it is. I think. I think if you care for the beer and you care for what's going in it, there's no reason that you should filter it. No. It's like it's it, to some extent. It's like sieving a stew. Yeah. You're like yeah. You, you get a lovely gravy, but what have you left behind? Exactly. You all you spend all that time putting all that flavour into a beer. Why would you then strip that back out? Of yeah. It? Like. Filtering is going to make it look clean and nice, but that's, that means nothing if the flavour doesn't carry through yeah. because you've taken it all out through a soup. So it totally depends on the beer you're trying to make. If you want a crisp, a really crisp, really dry IPA, filter it. If you want a really crisp, really refreshing lager, filter it. If you want a really full-bodied stout or a, a, a IPA that's going to really stick in the mouth for a good five seconds after you've swallowed, yeah. don't filter it. I think it also comes from the fact that when you're serving um, car scale, when you're waiting for the car scale to be ready, you generally wait for the clarity, because yeah. that means what used to be fish scale, well not fish scales, fish bladders, I think, mean, has Isenglass. settled out. Exactly, Isenglass? No, that, that's a place in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> it's not just beer nerdery on this channel. Um, so you're waiting for that to settle out, because you don't really want fishiness in your beer. But now, for a start, they use vegan alternatives in most cast beers. Mm -hmm and in bottle, that's not what they're using. Cliché number three. Cask beer is warm. Cask beer is warm. Uh, well, we should start with the fact that we've done a beer school on why cask beer is amazing. You can click on Sarah's face uh, to see that video. Um, I, I, would, I, would, I would say it, de it depends on your definition of warm. Now, the, the ideal temperature is like 11 to 13, which I think just means 12. Yeah. Yeah. Now, go dip your toe in the English Channel, because that'll be about 12. And if you can stay in there for 30 seconds and tell me that's warm, then I'll admit cask beer is warm. A keg beer will typically be colder than a cask beer, but that doesn't mean the cask beer is warm. No. Well, I mean, the science is the warmer something is, the more you can taste it, basically until it burns you. Next, we have beer should be served ice cold. Brad, you old dog, you didn't do these randomly. Um, he's clever, he's, he's clever. It, well, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, what we were saying about how beers are brewed for certain temperatures yeah. and have you make it too cold. Yep. It, then you won't be able to taste anything. Yeah. That's why you should never trust a beer that's served through something that says ice cold. Super cold beers like the Fosters and the Guinnesses, they do that so that it's colder for longer. Yes. But what they do is impair the flavour for at least half of that experience. Exactly. So our final beer cliche for the evening is upside down. 
Beer is simpler than wine. Well, that's just, that's poppycock. Bollocks, that is yeah. absolute bullshit. I mean, for a start, how many ingredients does wine have, Sarah? One. One. How many ingredients does beer have, people? Four. Four. Minimum. Four. Minimum four. The thing that annoys me is people talk about wine and they say it's so, so complicated, so interesting. Every batch is different because of the terroir. Terroir. The terroir. Oh, the terroir. Okay. Well, listen to me. Hops. Terroir. Where they're grown matters. Yes. Malt. Yeah, absolutely. Where that's grown matters. One Water. Way. Where that comes from. Oh, wait, that matters. Water and content. yeast. Who made it? Where it was made? When it was made? Uh, and indeed... What it's been blended with? Yeah. What, the, what bacteria there is in the yeast? There are literally endless ways to change a beer's flavour. And you just don't have that option with wine. No, there, there's no comparison really um, because you've got all of those different elements that you can chop and change and do in different quantities as well it's not even like you have to stick to the same amounts like yeah. you just change the amount of different types of malt in one brew and you'll get a different beer entirely so I hope we busted some myths there for you I mean brewers are so open-minded beer is so open and I think drinkers need to be the same to really enjoy the the wealth of the wealth of opportunities out there in yes, beer. Absolutely. And I think if you're at a bar and you try a beer and you're not 100% sure why it tastes a certain way, there's a good op- there's a good chance that it might it might mean to taste like that and it might be just a weird funky style or it might be off. Mm. But you should 100% always ask the bar staff and find out and then you can learn something and enrich yourself in terms of beer. And always 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 ask for tasters and then you know what you're getting. You know what you're going to like. Uh, so from Mother Kelly's, from the Craft Beer Channel, and from Sarah of Hot Topic and Sunday Brunch, uh, keep keep busting those myths and keep trying new beers. Cheers.